Well, welcome. My name is Andy Vibora with Travel Lane County, and we're talking tourism around Lane County. And one of the things that we've all been experiencing is these new state guidelines and how they affect our businesses. And the hospitality industry has really taken a hit during this time. And so we want to talk to uh, some of our business partners about, you know, how it's been going. And we're happy to have uh, Colby here at the beer garden today and he has experience with beer garden tap and growler and public house and great partners of ours and just want to kind of talk through how has the reopening process been going the guidelines are pretty complex as we've been talking about yeah they are complex uh, we got open at uh, public house on day one i think it was may 15th that we were able to open up and then beer garden we waited till the week after uh, mostly just because it's a lot of work it's not easy to open these up it's like opening up a whole new restaurant there's so many little things you got to be worried worried about. Um, got to get your staff back and get them trained up and get your processes in place and distancing and figure out the table configuration and, and that sort of thing. So if we're able to do it. It hasn't been without its hiccups, but it's worked. I mean, we're operational and we're probably over 60% year over year. So we're we're getting some people through and the, the people that are coming through seem to be ha just happy to be able to get out. That's been a great thing. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things, you know, we've heard anecdotally from some businesses that some customers haven't been particularly patient or respectful to staff. So I'm happy to hear that it's worked out well for you. I know you guys have used a greeter uh, at the public house and, and here at the beer garden, I understand. Um, talk a little bit about that and how that's helped you to kind of maybe uh, kind of bridge that uh, issue with some of your customers. Yeah, we started using the greeter. It was a recommendation from the governor on the phase one guidelines that we have a greeter. It wasn't mandated. We found it was completely critical to the operations that we were running, partly because we've changed our processes. And so our patrons that have come through that are used to the way it's always been are a little bit of shock when they come in. So the greeters, if nothing else is there to help train them. Um, also, it's been helpful to help the patrons uh, to solve any issues before they arise. And so there has been some issues in, around town that we hear about with patrons not being real happy, uh, but we use our greeter to kind of help solve that problem before they even walk on the door. In the door, if they're not comfortable with the way that we're doing things, then they could go somewhere else before they even come in. And that sure, certainly has seemed to help. We've had to pivot to using um, uh, online ordering system, mobile ordering system with your phone. It's software that we'd had developed uh, prior to, to COVID um, just to be able to allow someone to sit at their table and order from there as well, or go up to the bar, they had a choice. But we didn't realize that that was gonna be a perfect solution for us for this mm -hmm. uh, pandemic, but it has been. And so the greeter has been important for them to show the patrons coming in how to at least get it set up the first time. And as you found out, yeah. it's not complex to get it set up, but a little bit of help is good. Yeah. And then once you've got your account set up, then it's really easy after that. We've gotten to the point where about I think this last weekend our staff was thinking about 40 to 50 percent of our customers had already used Porter at this point. So that's been really good. The software is called Porter. Um, but that's the only way to use, that's the only way to order at our uh, beer garden and public house is because of the way that the food trucks are aligned out here. You couldn't have lines and very many tables. And it wouldn't have been a situation where we could open a very many tables to even make it worth opening for. And so because of Porter, we're not having any kind of counter or window service at the food vendors or at the bar. Everyone sits down. It gives us the opportunity to maximize our seating. It also limits the exposure to our staff at the counter. They're not getting repeat visitors right there for longer periods of time. So it's been critical. Without Porter and our, our the online ordering software, I don't think we'd be open at, at Beer Garden right now. Yeah, phase two, I wasn't anticipating anything in phase two that would benefit our restaurants and pubs. I, th I thought it would be centered around other areas like bowling and entertainment and, and some other gatherings and things like that. But they did release some guidelines that would be beneficial to us. Um, you can have bar seating now with a partition, plexiglass or whatever, that's a foot higher than someone sitting at the bar. So that could allow for some more seats. I don't think we'll do that at our pubs, but I know other places that I can think of several in town mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. have a lot of bar seating yeah. and really need that. So that could be a big benefit to them. Uh, for us, you could use booths with back-to-back -back seating in the booths as long as there's a some sort of a physical barrier that's at least a foot taller than the person sitting there. Well, we have that at Public House. So we'll be able to use all of our booths yeah, instead of right. every other one. And so that'll be the big benefit there. And then being able to open to mid till midnight um, 
we're less of those type of places, so it's a less of a benefit, but we'll probably still potentially open up to 11 if we have the patrons to justify it. But I know there'll be some establishments that that'll be really important for. Sure. Yeah. Well, it looks like you got a good crowd here on a Wednesday night, so that's great to see. Yeah. And we're excited. Um, you know, we've been keeping up our Lane County Open for Business page <laughs> um, that has all the, not all probably, but many of the restaurants and businesses um, by city throughout the county and outdoor rec sites that is available to the public. Um, and trying to keep up with that on who's opening and now for dine in and continuing with uh, takeout and delivery. Maybe comment on that. Are you still doing takeout and delivery at your, your places? Well, we've just shifted back just to takeout. We were doing delivery. It's a, it's a challenge. It's also a staffing challenge right now. It, the delivery was fun to do. I loved delivering beer to people's porches. <laughs> the reaction was pretty amazing. It was fun to do, but uh, it's not really easy from a logistical standpoint. Sure. So, yeah. sure. Um, talk a little bit about just kind of hopes and fears as we move through phase two and eventually with a vaccine, I guess, or some other treatment get to phase three. I mean, kind of what's going through your mind as we move through those phases? Well, it's been important for us. You know, we got our the PPP loan from uh, the CARES Act, uh, which was really helpful. Um, so hope is that the government continues to offer that type of support as much as possible through this pandemic, getting some help. Um, rent relief as well, um, some sort of a collaborative mm -hmm. rent relief approach with our landlords uh, is kind of an important thing, you know, because this could be another year, um, hopefully not. <laughs> but if it is, like, those, those are the type of things that we're hopeful for. Um, right now, it's been a big benefit. The PPP loan was great, super beneficial. OLCC has really changed their guidelines quickly and made it really easy to adapt. Um, we're adding seating here. We're going to move our fence out and add about 60 more seats. And I sent an application into LCC and I got an automatic or an automatic approval. And it's just how they're operating right now, which is not normal for them. I, you know, you have <laughs> sure. to go through the process, but they've been really good. So that's that's been a great thing. Uh, if I have fears, those are hopes and the hopes that those happen, those are good. And fears would be that those might not happen. But I think the big one is, do we get a spike and we get shut down again? Mm -hmm. That would be really difficult to navigate sure. for restaurants. You talked about OLCC and other government agencies being a little bit more flexible. That's great. I noticed the city of Eugene is also offering some opportunities that might help tap and growl or not with the parklets and being able to taking maybe some space out on the street to expand seating. Is there any opportunity there for you guys to take advantage of that? I believe so. We're going to look into that. Tap and Growler has definitely got that opportunity because our seating over there goes right up against the street and right. that parking spot. So there might be a little bit of a, a move there, but any any extra seating you get right now is is really helpful, mm -hmm. obviously. So, yeah. One of the things, you know, in the hospitality industry and that we're really missing is the ability to have mass gatherings. So everybody's on pins and needles about football season and other events. But, you know, we've got performing arts that shut down, our theaters, our live music venues. Um, how much does that affect you guys? I know in general we think it's about 30% of the, the business that comes into town is from visitors. Um, is that what you experience or kind of do you have a sense of that? Yeah, we experience it. We get overflow both at Public House and Beer Garden, but I would say even especially at Tap and Growler being so centrally located. You got the Holt Center. Um, you've got Autzen Stadium that's close by. We always at Tap and Growler get before and after traffic for football games. Clearly, we do at Beer Garden and Public House as well. So th that's a big thing. It's it's unfortunate. Um, I guess it is what it is at this point. Yeah. But yeah, that that impacts our businesses. All right. Well, Rick, you've been behind the camera the whole time. I haven't given you an opportunity to ask you anything. Really so you're doing no. a great job. Uh, anything that you'd like to ask? Colby? So I guess Colby, what I'd ask you is. How has this kind of, just for hope for other businesses, the positives of this, the innovation that it's forced you really, you know, we, we all want to change, sort of, yeah. <laughs> but you guys have really, it's kind of been beneficial to you. It's been really beneficial and our Porter Off, you know, uh, system for ordering from tables has been the biggest benefit, it's been critical for us. And I feel like it's, if nothing else, if other venues offered as an option, they could reduce their lines and maintain more tables. For us, it was literally just how many seats can we fit in here safely, meet the guidelines, and Porter was critical in that. And uh, I think it'd be beneficial for a lot of different restaurants. And even there's some bowling alleys that are contacting us as they're opening up right now as well. Thank you for joining us today as we talk about tourism around Lane County. 
get out there, support your local businesses. They need it. Um, go on to the websites of the Eugene or Springfield Chamber of Commerce. Take the business or customer pledge, you know, to be a good customer or to support the guidelines as we move through this together, and we will get through it together. Thank you, and have a great day, everybody.